Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Zeiss Conversations. We are here. I am just making sure I'm nice and in focus for you. There we go. Um, welcome. It's a beautiful day here on the East Coast. We are live in the studio again. Uh, happy to be back. We have a special guest for you today, a photographer that uh, kind of one of ours as Zeiss ambassadors kind of bumped into one day and became fast friends and got to talking. We said, hey, we'd love to have you on the show. So without further ado, let's please meet photographer Jenna Stern, who's sitting in with us today. Um, she, uh, to your left there, you can see Professor Kenneth Hines, our Zeiss ambassador and, and, and frequent commentator on this, on this program, as well as to your right is Zeiss ambassador Tracy Page. We're going to have a, a, a fun spirited conversation today about um, photography and and, and, and more to the point, portrait photography and how that can take a couple of different avenues, how you can do it, how you can expand yourself during the, uh, the, the pandemic, um, and, and generally how we're going to start maybe getting back to the studio really soon. So Jenna, welcome. Glad to have you here. Hi, thank you for having me. Of course. So if you want to give everybody a, a little bit of introduction on how you got started in photography, how you've progressed to what you're doing today, um, and, and just give us a little background on, on what you're doing. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, I, I, uh, I come from a, a family of artists. Uh, my earliest memories are of my mom holding a camera. It was uh, Nikon, I believe. Uh, back in the day and Polaroid and whatever uh, that we had around, but um, it's always been uh, a part of my uh, makeup that um, there were cameras around. Uh, I grew up as a, as a, uh, uh, a painter and a visual artist and uh, uh, as well as photography and uh, moved through high school and college. And in college, I moved over towards the dramatic arts and uh, pursued that uh, through grad school. Um, uh, again, always sort of having the, the camera near me um, and uh, started shooting uh, portraits again uh, when my daughter was born. Um, uh, mostly family portraits, street photography. We were living in Brooklyn. And um, uh, it sort of progressed through there. Uh, we now live in, uh, in Connecticut. We moved out of the city about five years ago. And um, when this pandemic hit, uh, there, a friend of mine um, told me about uh, these sort of porch portraits that were happening around the country. It was sort of in the zeitgeist. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was in San Diego actually telling me about this in March, early March. Uh, cut to mid-April, six weeks into our stay-at-home uh, experience here in Connecticut. And uh, I, I, I couldn't photograph uh, my daughter, who's 15, by the way, uh, the emerging spring flowers or our dog anymore in our backyard. And I uh, grabbed my mask, my camera, and uh, texted about five neighbors uh, if they wanted to do a porch portrait uh, with uh, the money going towards uh, neighbors who were uh, food challenged. Um, there were two organizations that I had in mind. Four, four families responded and uh, I, I did their portraits. I have a pretty quick workflow with that we returned them pretty quickly they put them up on facebook and i woke up to six requests for wow. portraits okay. the next day and i was like oh, okay and so <laughs> did that and woke up again next day five more eight more ten more it just kept going and going and going and it uh the project really had a had a um life of its own and I started scheduling by parts of town uh, and doing between five and 10 a day, roughly. Wow, okay. And, um, and uh, the money that was being done, uh, I didn't ask for a fee, so I didn't feel right about that, uh, but I asked for a donation to uh, one of two organizations, uh, Bridgeport Rescue Mission and uh, Council of Churches of Greater Bridgeport. And, 
at the end of the first week, I think we had three thousand dollars donated. Wow! Wow! Um, and then to the second week, it was like uh, almost it was five and change or something. It was a lot, and um, I had done almost. Uh, but but it was the whole project was was four weeks. I I, I stopped it at four weeks. Uh, photographed about one hundred and sixty families. My goodness! And we raised over seventeen thousand dollars between wow. the two between the two organizations. That's um, terrific. Yeah, and and uh, I was uh, I was just blown away by the. Uh, um generosity of of the families and uh sort of uh the good vibe of what are they you know just really everybody's happy to see me mm-hmm. <laughs> because nobody had seen anyone in so long yeah, I, was, I was gonna ask you like you know what were like how did people respond to uh the project and you know to how it kind of kept going like what 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 was it about the project that just got people very interested in in wanting to do it you know was it for the cause or they just you know kind of thought a combination of that and uh, it was a great concept well i um i think it's a combination of things um my my idea for it uh like early on i was like well i've got to I, w- I want to be able to search this later. So I, w- I, I, can- I wanted to grab a hashtag. I wanted to not brand it per se in, in a crass way, but in a way that was searchable. Um, and there were a lot of different porch project, front porch steps. Um, it was a whole, depending on the region of, uh, of the country. So I grabbed porch project 2020. And um, my idea was uh, uh, more of a documentary style. This, this isn't a holiday shot. This isn't a, you know, you don't have to even get dressed for it. All you have to do is walk out your door, grab your pets, walk out your door. I'm 20 feet away. I've got a mask on. We're all safe. And let's just document this craziness. It's kind of like you want it to kind of, for the moment that we're in, kind of take in where we are, how people are at home and just kind of capture that. Cause this is like a, a moment of history, basically. Yeah. And, and, and one of, one of my favorite shots actually was one of the first ones I took with a neighbor and like the, the girls, the three daughters and like mismatched socks, no <laughs> shoes at all. Do you know what I mean? It's like, eh, but that was the flavor of it. And like the next day, you know, there was, you know, there was one family who really put themselves together, you know, and I'm like, that's not quite it, but okay. You know, that's what, if that's how you want, maybe it's the first time you, you know, put your put makeup on and got your kids dressed and that's, that's what you want to capture. That's great. Um, another family, they came out and they were all dressed and there was a sort of a teenager sort of like, I'm ready for the portrait. <laughs> and I'm like, were you just in pajamas? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, go back and get in pajamas, please. Just, just take pajamas is fine. And they did. I said, well, first, let me just take this one first. So I took, I took, I took like the regular, they're dressed. And then, and then they like five minutes, they came back in their pajamas. Cause I'm sure it was just right there, you know, on the floor. And, and they're so much more relaxed and like laughing and it's just, it was and like, I loved the one of the dad in the shirt and the shorts with the co- the computer and the headset. And I'm like, that, <laughs> oh, that's yeah. like all of us right now working at home. Right. That was interesting because that was sort of like a little deeper into the process, you know, sort of the cinema verite part of it was wearing thin. And it was like, you know, it doesn't have to be us looking terrible in order to capture the moment, as it were. And when I came to that family, they, hit, they, they sort of propped themselves up. And I'm like, okay, awesome. You know, it's great. And then after that, people were like, oh, we could do that? Like, uh, oh. No, I think it's amazing. I think that is, that is documenting how we are during the pandemic, which is such a great part of what you're doing is we're documenting our families during the pandemic. Yeah. It was a real, for me, it was really hands-on. I mean, as, as a, as a portraitist, as you know, there's a lot of like manipulation. So there's like, mm-hmm. Oh, turn your head this way and do your nose. And you stand here and you stand there. If there's family photos and stuff, it's like, okay, let's arrange you all. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I, I tried to have it as uh, contactless. 
well, not, not, not even contactless, but I, I wanted to see how they naturally organically arranged themselves. And for the most part, it was beautiful. It was, you know, I, I wouldn't have necessarily come up with how they did that. Do you know, I'm like, I want, I just want you to walk out the door and arrange yourself as a family. And I'll, I'll let you know if the light's terrible, <laughs> you know, if it looks terrible, terrible i'm going to move you around and i did i moved people around it's like you guys switch or you did you come down or have everybody on the, the step or just whatever it was but for the most part you know and then you add the animals in and the animals like always take front and center you know it's like the animals have hired me to take the portrait of their humans <laughs> <laughs> i love that you know because they're just like whoop right right front and center and and i'm doing whistles and calls and you know speaking every language that I could possibly and and they're sort of like whoop, like right on me and i was like everybody look down the barrel don't worry about the the dog or the cat or you know there was a fish i don't speak fish but um <laughs> that would be interesting for example the bulldog wasn't like interested in any dog sound so i grew up with bulldogs so i started doing i started speaking bulldog <laughs> and they all started laughing and the bully looked right at me <laughs> so in doing this you know i yeah. i always i'm i'm always the gearhead I, i'm the nerd person i know so doing something like this with going through the pandemic how, what did you use for taking these pictures? And then also going through, you know, thinking about social distancing, did choosing a specific lens become a factor in this? Because I would assume that you would probably have to use something that, that might be a little bit of a longer range in this type of situation. So like, what, what did you use for, for these images? Um, I, um, I prefer to use um, where I had been using for portraits, for studio portraits, uh, is my Canon 5D Mark II, which I've had it for years. I got it in uh, my birthday in 2013. And um, that's been wonderful. And I've got this gorgeous 85 prime, just beautiful lens. But for this, I felt like it was more almost uh, uh, street photography portraiture just because there was some distance to it and I wanted it to feel a bit more gritty and not as smooth and and creamy as that lens uh, the results of that lens on the Canon um, so I, I used the Fuji and um, this little puppy right here um, I love some Fuji <laughs> I love this Fuji and I had the kit lens which I love uh, to start uh, which is 18 to 55, 2.8 to F4. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's Bet you're surprised I knew that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're a secret Fuji, Fuji shooter. So I think I knew that about you. But what <laughs> I did do, I just got this 35, which I love. But what I did do is I bought this, which is the 16 to 80, 16 to 80 F4. And, um, because I, that's what the di I needed more distance. And then with the crop factor that gave you about 24 to 1, 105 or so, which, so you got that, that kind of that long range in there. I did, I did. I was able to sort of step back a little bit because it's, you know, as the project went on, it was, uh, I was getting a lot of the house and then the people, you know, and, and then as the project went on, it sort of became much more about just the people on the porch type of thing. I mean, I really like the wider, the whole, the whole view of where they're living in this stay at home, you know, like it sort of told a story though, that everything, but yeah, then I was like, well, let's just get to it. <laughs> let's get to it. Well, get I mean, I, I think for a lot of us too is, uh, you know, I, I'm a professional photographer. I don't photograph my kids. Um, so being able to step outside and do a family portrait, that's a rare thing for me. So for me, after the novelty of shooting my house and my kids wears off, really, it's all about, oh my gosh, my kids are home. I need a portrait of us. And so you were able to do that. And some of them are fun and some of them are real portraits that people want to hang on their walls. And they were all, and all the kids are home. I mean, everybody got sent home from college. Everybody got sent home. So it was this very surreal uh you know quarantine stay at home uh 
with all the kids and all of a sudden you're right. all your grown children are well I mean, um we were empty nesters and now we're back to being a family of four so yeah it's it's, yeah. it's odd yeah it is it's a very odd time but i mean so i can see how you would change from starting out showing the house and the big porch and you know everybody is just a part of the big story but then the story really becomes the people who are yeah. the family unit that is now yeah. back together yeah and um and and also to get back to the question of of how the uh, how the project sort of grew is that I, I think the the shots sort of spoke for themselves in a way because everybody was uh, seemed to be um, really relaxed. There was no pressure for this shot. There was no like, oh, I've got to get dressed and I've got to do this. It's like no, all you right. have to do is walk out the door with your family. That's it, and relax. And there's no, and I'm shooting quickly. And it's, uh, you know, there's a, as I said, it was, um, it was a very, very relaxed and warm. Um, people were, ha- were putting bottles of wine at the end of the driveway, you know, to say <laughs> for you to partake. You. <laughs> I love no, it. Just like as a take it home, you know, as a thank you and stuff. There's a, as I said, I wasn't there. This wasn't, um, this wasn't a paid gig. This was, you know, something that I just wanted to do to uh, make sure that our community was was covered so uh, tell me about deliverables is it is it just electronic delivery or are you you actually doing any prints i i am not i know that for a long time well i i'm not interested in making prints for people there's so many uh, really good sites to be able to do that and people have their own ideas about how they want to frame it and mount it and everything so um, my deliverable is a is a is a file. It's a high res file. It's a web web res and high res file. Um, so you're and, so you're doing both. You're giving them a social media file, and uh, are you watermarking the social media file, or are you just sending I'm both not, unwatermarked? I'm not. I'm not. Uh, yeah. Shooting it and letting it go. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yes. Like I, me. wa- <laughs> I, I I want credit for my work. But um, I'm, uh, the watermark thing is a little. Uh, well, I like that this is bigger than you're, you're basically you're saying this is bigger than me. This is something that I can contribute and it's not about me. And I'm, I'm appreciating that. Yeah, that was sort of the freedom of it, too. Do you know, it's interesting. You take sort of money out of it and you're not sort of all of a sudden kind of crazed of getting this shot or that shot or whatever. And it's like, I'll get something and it's going to be representative of that moment so kind of segueing into you know i i know you jenna and you know for for those that don't you also do more than just photography you're also an actor so i i'm very curious as far as you know which one came first for you was it you know did you start doing photography and then acting or then acting and then you got a love for photography so kind of kind of tell us a little bit about that journey um uh yeah it's uh i i think photography came first honestly if i'm being super honest about that i remember having really like kind of silly grown-up conversations as a kid about you know the lighting in the 40s or whatever you know like (laughs) like impressing people at a party it's like oh my god you know (laughs) like whatever 10 years old or something um no but I, I was paying attention to light I think uh first uh and um acting uh sort of came you know it sort of progressed into that and uh but it's always been side by side. Uh, and um, I, I don't think I ever though thought that photography would be my main career. Like, I don't, I just, maybe I just didn't see that as a, as a way through as, as opposed to acting. Kind of like just, you know, it's doing photography for you is kind of like that enjoyment that you get outside of working, you know, you have fun with it and you know, it's, like, you know, you know, there's not that much pressure on it. Um, yes and no. I mean, because I do take it seriously. So it's not, mm-hmm. it's, it's not quite a hobby. I mean, I do, I do have a company and business and I do, you know. It's uh, not just a side hustle. It's actually something you're working at. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I love, I love too, that you talk about, and Jen and I had talked to all, all of us had talked before we started and she said she had a fine art background, which I do as well, painting and drawing. And so when you were talking about light just a second ago, I mean, as, as when we study painting and drawing, we learn where to paint the light so that our paintings or our drawings look natural, like a real person. And then when we're photographing, then we have to learn how to put the light where we know intuitively it should go because we learned how to paint it. Yeah. That is, that's a progression that is, is just, it's really cool. So uh, how did you, how did you figure all this out as you moved from drawing and painting and into photography, knowing being intuitive about light? Um, I, 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 I don't know if, how I figured it out necessarily. I think it was all sort of a jumble, you know, sort of a, a angst ridden teenager with some black and white film. Um, was it R RGB? You said you could send your film in and they'd send you a, 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 they'd send you film back. They'd send you your prints <laughs> and then send you another roll of film. So it was like, you know, first one's free, you know, so it's like your dealer. So like here, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll cover your, we'll cover your, uh, your prints. And then here's another roll of film. Um, but that was in the eighties, uh, in, in California. So that was, uh, there was always film. And, um, uh, I remember lots of grainy black and white shots down at the pier in the rain. <laughs> Moody. <laughs> I'm jealous of you all because you all got to experience film. I've, oh I've never gotten to do Kenneth, that. It is still in existence. You can God. still shoot film. Humble this brag. You're so you can young. Have. I know, right? He, he reminds us that his 30th birthday is still coming That's, up. On, you know. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I, even I remember the, um, the, the, the extra, the free roll of film that got me right? hooked as a kid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah shot no, a lot of yes. 35 millimeter that way. That's right. I mean, it's the only way you could really, you know, you didn't have to buy anything. You just got your. I'm actually. Back. I've. I'm. I've, I've been going back to it. So. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Look at that little piece yeah. of paper. I know, right? I, I. I was like, I really want to find one of those sunny sixteen roll charts to stick in there, just totally. so that I have it. Oh I my mean, god! Is the rest of it in the freezer. Uh, yes. Well, it's in the fridge. It's in, the fridge in the fridge, rather. Yes. yes. <laughs> Yeah, I have, I have a couple of rolls of uh, Kodak T Max and a couple of rolls of. Um, oh my God. Oh my. Sh oh, I can't think of the other brand. It's not Fuji. Oh, it'll come to me. But yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, it, maybe it's Agfa or something. Uh, anyway, I have a couple more rolls in the fridge, so it'll be fun. Just, yeah. uh, I'm I'm a junkie, and and uh, PPR in Atlanta has been feeding my habit with. Ooh, nice. you should try this because the green is going to do this. I and know, this right? And this. And then you're like, yeah, it's a rabbit hole. The rabbit hole. Yeah. Of and film. It's another good question. You know, would as far as like doing these kind of portraits, would you ever shoot them on film as opposed to using your digital cameras? I, I don't know that that would give you the immediacy though of turning the images over. That makes it a whole different. That yeah, that that's. I I um I was loaned a medium format Hasselblad. Um, oh my gosh! And uh, when I was in Brooklyn, and uh, speaking of film, and uh, I didn't I couldn't I didn't load it correctly for like three rolls. <laughs> like everything. That's an expensive mistake. Those are like a dollar an image. <laughs> I know. Right. And and my, the one st the one shop in Brooklyn that that. Uh, that developed film he was so happy for me when i finally got an image <laughs> wow <laughs> but yeah that was fun just like running around town with the you know beautiful the porsche you, i got the porsche in my pocket yeah it's almost like the rolls royce at that point yeah beautiful it was so beautiful i, I literally just i just have image i have like you know uh you know, digital images from my phone of, of the image that I didn't get. <laughs> <laughs> the like, phone is our new Polaroid, right? I, I could have gotten this <laughs> if I had, <laughs> if I had loaded the film correctly. <laughs> Are you um, thinking about doing anything with this or maybe turning it into a book or is there a continuing project? Um, uh, twofold that I would, <laughs> I did put it into a album um, and I tried to, I tried to get the folks to, um, 
to donate and 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 make a bulk like 150 of them and uh they they didn't go for it uh i thought it was a pretty good idea you know to to donate that money to the organizations that you know and that would sort of push the project over twenty thousand dollars and would have been like kind of great but they were like yeah here's your 20 percent so maybe yeah to turn it into some sort of a yearbook or something on the pandemic as part of the fundraiser that that would be yeah i mean it's as i you know i it's 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 uh yeah see like nice very nice yeah it's it's a fun little it's a fun little uh this is the eight by eight. And then I also have smaller six by sixes, which were a bit better, but it's still cost prohibitive for the sort of normal family who, you know, it might be okay for like a business who wants a little small coffee table book type of thing, you know, of, of the town. Um, so uh, yes, I mean, I'm, I'm open to it because I, I, I think the shots are still interest. They're, they're interesting. It, it captures a moment in time in this community, um, which, uh, you know, it's nice, it's nice to see. And as far as the next thing, I've sort of uh, pivoted to, I've kind of got the fundraiser bug a little bit. Um, it's a great bug to have. <laughs> yeah, it's, there's just something about it. It's not, you know, to, um, but this next one is for our, our particular, um, our high school has a, 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 a group, it's called Caring Hearts, and it's uh, to help, uh, uh, our families in need here right directly in our school district um, with uh, gift cards, like $20 gift cards. So I just tried to put it really simple. Every uh, it's a senior cap and gown portrait. So uh, each one is a $20 gift certificate to, or a gift card rather. And this one does have a bit of a fee. So I am covering my I'm covered. Yeah. 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 And you have at to some point you got to get paid <laughs> right right and uh, are you finding now that the stay-at-home orders are starting to lift is is the request for the starting to slow down uh the request for the porch portraits yeah well i kind of closed it oh, closed, so it's done for you it's done for me i mean i'm still offering it at a price that includes uh, a, a, a large portion of it going to donation but mm -hmm. it's more of a more of a, a price there there's a fee now on it um but uh uh yeah so i i i, I closed that up but it was it was dwindling as as the reopening was happening then there's the the moment's gone right people going back to work and yeah. they're actually getting back to their normal lives in a way yeah, <laughs> yeah. and, and you, i was you, i was only shooting between like at the time early spring between four and six three thirty to 530. And then like every two weeks, it moved a little bit, just so that my light was somewhat similar. Oh, okay, so you were trying to, sh to shoot in afternoon light then? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, that makes sense. Because none of the kids get up in the morning. The teenagers aren't <laughs> getting up before noon. Oh, and I know mine aren't. So, <laughs> right? Yeah. So you can't yeah. schedule, hey, 1030, like, mm, no. <laughs> Yes, I'm yeah, guilty no. of that because everyone knows that I'm never up before noon. <laughs> no, you surprise me when you are when you are. Occasionally, Ken will go, hey, "Yeah, hey, I'm here." And yeah. Says, yeah. What? <laughs> but but you stay up all night on social media and answering you know, everyone's questions. That, do the things that us old people can't do. So I'm I'm in bed and you're still up answering questions. Because you're so young. I know, right? <laughs> I'm I'm trying to stay that way. I'm trying my best. I'm like I'm losing my two this year. <laughs> we were just the pity party that we have for you yeah. right now. It's just yeah. so all strange. The, all the tiniest violins are playing. So. <laughs> so we are all talking about also going back to work, and and we were talking about this a little earlier that I went to back back to work last weekend. So Jenna, when are you are you, you're starting to move into the other sessions, the cap and gown, and you were saying that no makeup artist yet. So you're, you're talking to the moms. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, well, it actually starts tomorrow. The seniors picked up their cap and, caps and gowns today. Um, and I've got about 18 or so lined up in the next, it's Wednesday is their graduation. Um, wow. Yeah. So, uh, and it's, 
I'm doing between, I'm doing four to seven now because it's a little bit later. I can shoot a bit later and the weather's going to be great, thankfully. So that's not, that won't be an issue, but um, uh, yeah, that's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to enlist the parents uh, to uh, be my stylist assistant type of, you know, make sure, make sure the hair and the cap is set and everything and um, give them the directions yeah a lot of the directions though I mean I I, I kind of I, I kind of like letting them do their own thing you know I don't um again posing people I mean first of all all of the kids are so much more savvy you know they've, they've been taking their own selfies for right Kenneth all the kids <laughs> really <laughs> another dig really? yes yes I, I'm joining I'm, her in that. That was good, Jenna. I'm I love being, you already. I'm being bulldozed by all three of these people here. I feel I'm some type folks. of way. I know. It's like Jenna. I sent you. A, I sent you. A, I followed you on Instagram. So, okay. uh, everybody, Jenna Stern and Jenna Stern Photography. So, um, and we'll have to gang up on Kenneth together. Oh my god. So, no, but I mean, doing... honestly, I mean, I, I if I get you know, I, I've got sort of these eighteen. Um, uh, parents who have reached out and said, yes, we want to be a part of this fundraiser. Terrific. You know, I've got them all scheduled, da, da, da. Um, and, uh, and I can look up and see on, on Facebook, you know, uh, I can, I can see the kids, you know, and see, and they're, everything's like, mm, 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 mm. I mean, they're so savvy about their angles, about light, about, I mean, everything. Usually what I have to do is tell them to stop. Like, <laughs> No, yeah, I mean, like, even, even no, the I understand little kids, it. like when you're taking like family photos and the little one's like, mm, mm, mm. I'm like, and her, and I'm like, wow. It's like, <laughs> like, all right, stop putting your hands on your hips. And with yes. actors, I always, I always get the, yeah, uh, the sort like, of, what, what are you doing with your eyes? Cause we squinching. It makes me look more interesting, right? The squinchy. <laughs> we learned the squinch. The, the yeah. Sort of so like, we have to break them of their habits sometimes because they, I'm so, they I squinch. My headshot is a squinch. I, uh, you know. On a Peter her <gasps> Peter, what's his name? Yeah, the squint. Um, so when you're doing the the cap and gowns, just you know, because again, more ideas for how we get back to work and how we get back yeah. into business. So when you're doing the cap and gowns, are you setting these up at the school, or you you have a particular place? You just going to individual homes, like you did the porch portraits? Yeah, how are you doing my, this? Again, How's my this thought for this was it's not it's uh, uh we finally do the, they are going to get to walk. Uh, because there there wasn't a graduation plan for a while. Yeah, so my my kids graduated in May, so there was no walking. Everything was no virtual. Walking. So they're they're doing it. They're they've they've got a, a great big uh, parking lot down at the beach. Uh, at the, the we have a beach here in the bay uh, and uh, and the sound rather. And um, they're going to do two screens, and everybody's in their cars like a drive-in, you know. And the graduate gets to come out and go across and receive this something anyway. So, and there is supposed to be a, uh, a, a, a picture taken in their cap and gown there. So my idea is this is not to compete with that. This is a fundraiser for Caring Hearts. Uh, this is a portrait more intimate uh, at, uh, at your home, uh, just as a, as a way to, uh, to capture the moment. Again, it's, 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 a, it's a branch of the, of the porch. So are you you're gonna stay outside or are you gonna go inside? Staying outside. Okay, so we're we're just keeping it environmental Absolutely. as safe as possible, still keeping the distance. Yep. You're going to use a um, you're going to use that beautiful eighty five prime. Actually, yes, I'm actually going to go back. I'm going to use the can. If it's one person, uh, and I really would like sort of nice, lovely, creamy for this. I am. I'm using Big Boy. As I call. Big Boy. <laughs> Hold on. I got it right here. It's, it's so heavy to pick it up. Is. It really is. Hold on. I'll be back in a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah big boy um but i just i love this 85 it's so so pretty With the best lenses isn't it so look out of love an 85 <laughs> i know and let me get this there we go so because see at least she see tracy is now going to spoil you because she did that to me and put a 100 in my hands and now i'm addicted to 100 <laughs> Yeah, well, what can oh, I, I know, I know. The There's nothing sexier than a 100. I know. Oh, 
I don't know. The 55 was pretty sweet this weekend. So it's, it's that whole yeah, Otis no, thing. But, yeah, but that 100 on a single person on a portrait, oh, yeah. it is, the nice. 55 is sweet. And I need an EF mount. Hunt, hunt. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's uh, that 100 is is really a beautiful lens. Well, when we get uh, back to the I, office, maybe I'll I'll test it out. I don't think it's too late to to test hit up out bar. sending me a 55 EF. Thank you. <laughs> it's too it's too late to hit up borrow lenses for the hundred. Yeah. But. Well, no, it's it's not. I mean, you can we, you can have it tomorrow. Lens <laughs> rental. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, they are good for that they, i know uh, i know god so um, and we, we know people in places so yeah so is there, is there 100 gonna be there. arriving at my house <laughs> oh, <they're fantastic. laughs> you're gonna have to have this discussion off screen i guess so yeah <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah i i i'm not the one who brought that up by the way so just, okay. just so you know okay. later on all right there's blame to be had it's not okay. mine <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, I'm, so that's I will I'll, I'll use the eighty five and I'll bring the other because in case there there wants that you know somebody wants to do uh, uh, you know again another group a family or like a jumping thing right it's always good to be prepared you never know when you're yeah. going to get a group of two or three seniors I mean I've had that happen in sessions before where all of a sudden they've invited their best friends and I have you know. I have on Tuesday I've got uh, twins twins. And a friend and her uh, and three friends. So oh, wow. that's yeah. So it's like I'm like I'm done, booked, no more. <laughs> I know. I do this with Santa every every year. I do Santa Santa Claus one day a year. Yeah. And sometimes I'll have somebody I'll think of as, as an individual kid session, but they've brought like all of the family. Yeah. So it's it's like okay, let me change out the lens and yeah. we'll do this differently and yeah. Yeah, so yeah. you just have to be prepared for those moments. So, do you have anything else in the works as you're as you're getting back? I know you're not into your shooting season yet for SVU, so that's not happening yet. So, tell us what else you've got going on. Uh, what else would be uh, basically behind me over in that in that little closet over there uh, is uh, is our recording studio for voiceovers. Both my husband and I. Uh, he's an actor as well. Uh, do voiceovers. And um, because of this pandemic, a lot of the companies are going back to their people. So um, Brennan has a, has a um, pharmaceutical ad that was running for years and they've sort of, Hey, why don't you come back and do that? And then uh, I did Poland spring uh, for like the last couple of years. Wow. Uh, and they've, they've asked me to do something next week. So that little space over there is uh key to our continued revenue <laughs> no it, it is i mean we've, we've i think we've got one too with the the quilts on the walls and you know hanging up the soundproofing and and making sure that it's all all good yeah. and ready to go i haven't it, done voiceovers in a long time now it's a it's a little it's a little bit more than the quilts at this point <laughs> it was one of those like okay call sweetwater <laughs> let's go <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 you can't really see it outside the door. I've got the the foam with the you know the teeth coming out of it to yeah. the sound blocking so that my family yeah. um, we have we have combating dueling webinars going on on the one stage. Oh wow! Where wow. I'm in one room doing it and he's in the other room, so we're trying not to interrupt each other. So oh wow, okay, yeah, so, kind but, of as a. But, <laughs> go ahead, Kenneth. <laughs> well, I was gonna uh, question for the both of you. Uh, you both are doing portraits and have kind of been doing, you know, Tracy, you got back to work last weekend and Jenna, you're have been doing the porch project and now doing the cap and gown uh, fundraiser. So do you all have any kind of words of wisdom for someone like myself who has not kind of gotten to that, that area yet to where they feel, oh, do I want to go out? Do I not want to go out? I think I'm just going to stay in bed still. I'm still kind of, you know, be a little bit cautious about it. Hmm. I I know that um, I'm probably being a little bit crazy. So, um, you know, my actors are very concerned about going to back to work in a healthy manner, and my makeup artists are very concerned about it. So, um, and I actually I, I think that this would be a great Zeiss topic too for us to talk about. And I have um, one of my makeup artists is is really eager to come talk to us. Um, but we are concerned about how we sterilize the makeup equipment and 
because makeup is so close to the person they're talking to, we're, we're using face shields and um, we idea. even delved into what kind of hair dryers are um, like a, a, a Dyson hair dryer, which is typically what we use. Um, is 200 degrees less hot than a regular hair dryer, and it really needs to be. I think she said 410 degrees or hotter in order for the hair dryer to effectively kill the virus. And because a hair dryer is blowing the virus off of the body and off of the skin, you have to have the heat to kill the virus. I mean, so things that we've we've never even talked about before. It's, it's like you know, but we're 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 my makeup artist is gloving. I talked to an epidemiologist epidemiologist last week who told me that it really was not necessary for me to glove, but because I am touching door handles and then touching my camera, I'm staying masked and I'm making sure I'm staying masked. I'm keeping my glasses on um, so that I'm not touching my, my face. And then we, I spent a ridiculous amount on hand sterilizer, but we have hand sterilizer stations throughout the studio. Come in the door, you sterilize. We're using microband and Lysol on all of the furniture we've put all of our throw pillows and our plants and anything away that is an extra germ catcher. We've uh, gone from uh, a common hand towel in the bathroom in the kitchen to paper towels. And so we've also had- Common hand towel? No. You, know, you put the nice linen towel out. Those are now <laughs> away. Those are gone. No. Yeah. Uh, we've had to put trash cans in so that we have more trash cans to deal with You know our hand towels and the makeup artist and everything is now- we make sure everything is bagged and thrown out in between sessions. Um, I mean, it's just, it's, there's just a lot of steps we're going through, but I think this is going to be a way of life for us. I don't see that this is going to change. I think that these new habits, my studio is going to look a little less homey because I don't have to throw pillows in the plants out anymore. But I think these are, until we get a handle on this, this is the way it's going to be. And I'm just going to shoot outside. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have to handle things completely differently. And I, Apparently, with a yeah. hundred with a hundred lens, that's with a hundred lens. Soon. It's, it's actually nice because your one hundred backs you up a little bit more than the eighty-five. Of, of it course, it gives you a little bit more distance. Of course, it's a really nice focal length for. Yeah, for keeping I, I, your, your I'm actually distance. okay with the eighty-five. I t- I actually tested with my weeping cherry tree outside because because it is cap and gown. I I do need full length, so. Mm-hmm. I am I am backed up uh, uh, quite safely uh, for a full length in eighty five in the prime, so yeah, but I, I yeah. definitely tested. I I, I wasn't going to bring up my my long suffering daughter <laughs> to be my to help me. <laughs> oh no, yeah, mine went to the studio with me last week because one of my assistants was not ready to come back to work yet. Yeah, so my my twenty one year old was was uh, assistant two in the studio this last week, so. Assistant one came back. Assistant two was it was like, yeah, yeah, we're not ready yet. So yeah. Yeah. hopefully Calling she'll be back sick. in July. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've, I've kind of been been in that boat because you know I I have a client that I'm working with next weekend, and it actually was there. It's it's a maternity shoot, and so I'm I'm a little bit more cautious about that. But they kind of feel more comfortable with me being their photographer, also. Right. So it's like okay, I, I get it from that standpoint. And, you know, I'm just going to be extra, extra cautious. Um, we are going to be outside. So we're, we're running the Jenna method here. And, nice. um, <laughs> you know, That's just going to make sure, <laughs> you know, <laughs> totally. I'm going to have my, my gloves, I have my, my, <laughs> my uh, masks and things like that. So it's, it's, it's really going to change how I communicate and interact with my clients, because usually I go for the, you know, kind of 40 millimeter or 85, but this, for this particular shoot, I'm actually looking at the 85 and 135, which generally I don't go with the 135 that often. So it will be a little bit of a change for me, but I, I want to make sure that I do have, you know, that distance uh, between them and myself. And, you know, I, I'm going to be all hand sanitizered up just like you, Tracy. <laughs> well, and the hardest thing for me is the mask. So I'm only 5'2", and I have a small face, so the mask rides up into my eyes. And um, that's been really tough. But I'm really dedicated to the idea of masking. And I think that that is the most important thing we can do. And then I'm also asking, you know, anybody who's... I've asked, asked extra people to stay out of the studio only only the actor or the actor and a parent, if it's a young actor, and I'm asking the parent to mask. And um, 
so far, you know, because we hear so much political discourse on masking, not masking, but to a T, everybody that has been in my studio has been absolutely fine with everything that I've asked them to do. So I think there's a lot of communication that I'm doing beforehand that has made everything go more smoothly. But um, yeah, the masking was the hardest thing for me. And I am, um, I've ordered some more and one of my dearest friends is, is custom making me some too. And, and I should have those soon because I, keeping them out of my glasses and out of my eyes has been, is really tough. And I keep wanting to pull it off and I have to keep telling myself, yeah you have to leave that in place. This is a new way of life and and this is what you have to do. So, and um, my daughter keeps reminding me that I'm not socially distancing. So apparently I had um, Kylie Curran who is, uh, she was Abra in Dr. Sleep this fall and she's also uh, in a new show, Sulphur Springs on Disney Channel. She'll be starring in that. And she was in on Monday and um, Kylie and I did a mass portrait of our you know, selfie of ourselves. And Emma says, mom, you're hugging Kylie. I'm sorry. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so you I, forget, I'm right? apparently, yeah, I'm having real trouble staying away. I'm a hugger and I'm having trouble staying away yeah. from people. So they're, they're I've even actually, referred it to like hugging myself. There's one of the, um, that was actually, I saw that in the times this weekend, there's a, a whole thought out procedure on how we can go back to hugging. I saw so, that. Yeah. Yeah. Turn your face, hold your breath. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I actually, I did see that too. And it was, um, and I was sitting next to Kylie when I did this but and then I had a young beautiful young woman who's a soccer player at University of Maryland came in this weekend and she had been to a lot of the um the the protest and um you know it's like I know I have to like back up and really take it seriously because she has been around a lot of people and she said at the protest people were very close and they were not masked and she was masked but you know I just it's like okay you know back up and don't get too close and it's yeah. just a constant re and I had um a young Disney actor, Will Buey, um, from Bunked, was in my studio about three weeks ago, and we did him by himself with his mom without any other clients in that day because his mom has been going through chemo, and we wanted to make sure we were taking extra precautions that she was not exposing herself to anything at my studio. So, um, you know, it was just her and Will that day at the studio so that there were not any extra people coming or going. So we're, we're trying to be very much aware of who we've got in and out and what we're doing. Yeah, e even though mine was outside, I, I, I mean, when I got out of the car, um, I just had the blue sort of masks, you know, regular sur surgical masks, whatever. Yeah. I have it looped on my ears and underneath, or I would take it off, like, so if they had little kids, I'm like, hi, it's me. And now I'm like this, <laughs> da, 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 da. just so they could see this. But I usually had a hat, there was glasses, there was a mask. Um, and for the most part, I was still distanced. There was only one or two times where uh, the angle of the porch and everything, and there was like a drop off. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, we are this is not working. Well, no, I was like within 10 feet, but it was even... Right, where you just had to get up onto their level. You can't do it from down below the street. I understand. Um, I kind of, I, I was sort of down and I sort of was like lift, lifting up the can. I was like, oh, I'm going to get tricky now. Whoop, flip. And, uh, thanks, thanks for that LED thing. Yes, that thank you, yes. Fuji. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but that was only, you know, sort of, you know, every time walk, walking into a new location, sort of you're scouting as you're walking, you're like, okay, okay, okay. What am I looking at? You know, what's my background? Where's the light? Where's the shade? Where's it like, do, 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 <laughs> like scan, scan, scan. Um, but yeah, there's, I, I absolutely had a mask on the, um, even when I was distanced uh, uh, outside. Now see if, you know, one, like how we met Jenna, you know, I, I certainly wouldn't have known who you were at that time if you're all masked up. Um, so it was it was very interesting of, of how we came about meeting. And everyone who knows me online knows that my favorite spot in New York City, Grand Central Terminal, love that place. So I'm I'm there all the time. People watching. That's that's what I do. Yeah, but you're there at seven fifteen in the morning. It's the thing. That was only a one time thing. I had never been there that early, and my friend Mo. He's usually had, not awake then. 
I know. You just have to point out the obvious. You just have to point that out. So it was, it was, it was difficult to be up that early, but I was like, okay, when, when it's a planned thing, I can actually be up. If I don't have anything scheduled, I'm like, right. Because between 720 and 730 is when that light comes through in the spring, in the early spring, in order to get the person, whoever that's going to be walking through that light. You know, Tony had these pictures. Yeah. <laughs> I'm being surprised seeing those pictures. Oh, he has I'm everything. A, I'm a collector. So <laughs> we, uh, my friend Mo and another one of our friends, Derek, we were shooting the, the sunlight coming through Grand Central that morning. And Jenna saw us lined up with our Sony cameras and our God, Zeiss the lenses gear. there. Yeah. I was like, what are you, you guys look so like, look at your, your camera gear. Like, it's so serious. Wait, hold and, on a second. That that doesn't quite sound like me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm going to back that up. As in, I was walking up the stairs and Mo reached down and picked up this enormous lens that was like, whoa, what's happening? And you guys are all set up beautifully on the tripods of the Sony gear and you had like the Zeiss and the Alpha and every, everybody was like patches and, you know, hats and shirts and like their own their own you know website on the sleeve Cups. what is happening <laughs> i'm like um do you what what are we looking at <laughs> because everybody's pointing down onto the sort of the plaza of the the main the main uh, grand central and i i was early i was being picked up to do my last scene for svu which would then become the season finale because they stopped production right production it, stopped early yeah it happened to be march 5th which is my mother's birthday which also happens to be mo's birthday which is why i remember that day because when we were and i said later like what a special morning it was it was a terrific way to start the day and, uh, and he said and it was my birthday i was like it's my mom's birthday um anyway so yeah and and now i know the last day that i was in the city Wow. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was quite something. It was very impressive. The lineup of, uh, of gear. And what I was, what I thought was very interesting, Kenneth, was that, you know, Mo is not a small guy. <laughs> you he, thought he was my bodyguard, my security. No, my and then Derek, he's a tall guy too, you know, and then, and then there's you. <laughs> <laughs> The You're small, slender, slender guy. <laughs> very slender. But meanwhile, both of these guys are on your flanks. And they're literally turned into you. So the body language is, you're the man. Like, <laughs> the body language was, the guy in the middle is, is, is who we're sort of, like, turned towards. And it was a very interesting vibe. You know, it was just sort of like, you know, in New York, whatever, you sort of read, read people's body language and everything. And it was, they were all set up and they kept on looking at you and they kept on looking at you to see what you were doing and da da da. And they were, you know, and, and then you guys were checking each other's uh, set up and making, but it was a very interesting, uh, and I, I, didn't, I didn't know your depth of knowledge at the time. Um, so it was sort of, and I, and I don't shoot on Sony or Zeiss uh, yet. We're going to change that. At least yeah. the size part of it. We do, um, we do make lenses for Fuji, so you're covered. I know. I heard about that. Um, anyway, it was a really interesting, and it was such a positive uh, experience. And uh, and I w then I had to leave because I had to find the, the Ride, car yeah. to get to set. And um, I turned around, and I saw them all, and I was like, hold up, guys. Do you mind just turning around? And Did you get a picture of that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, I shot that. their portrait shooting, which is something that's another project that I have, which is um, uh, uh, access. Uh, it's, uh, I, put it, I called it access artists at work, which um, is about shooting the, the, the process of creating. Um, documenting that and uh, it's a bit difficult to do with painters, which is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be sort of fly on the wall with painters, but that's a little dicey because it is so personal um, yeah and it's really difficult but uh I remember Kenneth you know we were all and and Mo and Derek was like oh we've got to get together and do a walking tour like you know a photo 
a photo walk. And I'm like, great. I'm going to be photographing you all doing this. <laughs> like, I love it. <laughs> I love it. I'm, I'm actually, that's I'm coming what I'm up, interested in. <laughs> I'm coming up to New York for a personal project. And, um, uh, the director, Eden Martinez has, uh, she, she told me last week, she said, you know, Hey, can I videograph you on this project? And I'm yes. That's yeah. so, so I know we, we're, we're about on, on time. So we're going to have to yeah. start wrapping up, but just, um, for you, Jenna, um, when you're talking about environmentally artists, look up, um, there is a wonderful photographer um, from um, mid last century named Arnold Newman. And he um, really did a lot of environmental portraits of, of artists. Mm -hmm. And so that'll give you a lot of inspiration there. So thank you. Uh, I love his work. Thank you so much for coming on with us today. This has been a blast to kind of get to know you and I'm going to follow you and, uh, you know, like uh, BFFs forever. I love it. <laughs> Thank you yeah, so much for having me. It's been, it's been terrific uh, talking about this. I mean, you know, especially with the, uh, uh, with quarantine and, and uh, this is sort of the most social that I've, that I've been in a long time. And it's, uh, I'm a, I'm a social being, um, <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I've really enjoyed speaking with all of you. Thank oh. you so much. Well, we've loved having you here. Um, it's really been terrific. And, and each time we get together, you know, we, we, we always talk and we always find some new interesting angle or avenue uh, that the artists that we're talking to are creating and staying creative, especially in this time when we are socially distant. And, and it's always wonderful to hear that. Um, so thanks, Jenna. I do want to say uh, uh, particularly thanks. And, and let's talk because, you know, I, I, I got connections on lenses so we can Ooh, we can, we can help you out, uh, you know, and give you give you some test demos there and see what you think about them. Thank you. So our thanks again to Jenna Stern for uh, for joining us this afternoon. And as always, Zeiss Ambassadors, uh, Professor Kenneth Hines and Tracy Page. Thank you as well for being part of our team today. Um, and we want to thank all of you for being here with us. Uh, we know that uh, it's nice and sunny out and it's a great Friday. What a great kickoff to the weekend to have this conversation. Uh, we're going to be moving this to Thursdays starting next week, just so you're aware, um, but we'll make sure that everybody knows the time and the guest. Thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate having you all here. Like Jenna said, and it's very true, we're all social people, social beings, and, and we want to be able to, to talk and interact and, and create with you. And that's really the goal. Um, so thanks again, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week.